So as Josh Cotton mentioned, his favorite dinosaur is Ultrasaurus. So our combo weird dinosaurs of the day are going to be Ultrasaurus slash Ultrasauros. And if that doesn't make any sense to you, it probably shouldn't until I explain what happened. So Ultrasaurus means ultra reptile, and it was originally described as Ultrasaurus by Jim Jensen back in 1979. Jim Jensen had used the name Ultrasaurus Macintoshi as a nonum nudum, which is a Latin term meaning naked name, and it's mostly used in taxonomy specifically to mean a scientific name for an animal that hasn't been published or described completely yet. So Jim Jensen started talking about some fossils that he found in 1979 and describing them as Ultrasaurus macintoshi. Jim Jensen didn't publish his findings until 1985. Meanwhile, in Korea, a man named Hong Mook Kim had described what he thought was a very similar dinosaur and also called it Ultrasaurus. In his case, he called it Ultrasaurus tabriensis. So Kim published his findings about what his dinosaur was back in 1983 and used the same name, as I said, believing that they would be in the same genus. Then in 1985, when Jim Jensen published his Ultrasaurus, it was determined that they weren't related enough to share the same genus, so they needed to use different names. So what Jensen did was he changed the name to Ultrasauros. One of Jensen's peers had actually suggested that he rename the dinosaur Jensenosaurus, but he really didn't like that. I guess he was attached to Ultrasaurus, so he came up with the Ultrasauros idea instead. So when Jim Jensen described his Ultrasaurus slash Ultrasauros, he described a dorsal vertebrae as well as a large scapulocoracoid, and that's basically a shoulder bone. So he believed that this large vertebrae was part of an incredibly large dinosaur, thus the Ultrasaurus, and that the shoulder bone was larger than anything that had been found in a Brachiosaurus, despite being a similar style, so that they probably belonged to the same species of large sauropod. Ultimately, Jim Jensen used the dorsal vertebrae that he discovered as the holotype for his Ultrasauros macintoshi. So the holotype is the bone that identifies the species in archaeology, so because of that, All the future discussion of Ultrasauros macintoshi is based specifically on that bone, not on the shoulder bone, which he later added into what he thought was Ultrasauros. So his peers at Brigham Young University published a paper that they called A Reassessment of Ultrasauros macintoshi in 1996. So they basically outlined exactly what they thought about the fossil, specifically BYU9044, which is that particular dorsal vertebrae, as well as the shoulder bone, which is the uh, specimen BYU9462. So when they looked at the dorsal vertebrae, they decided that it really looked just like a supersaurus vertebrae. And in fact, it was discovered in the same area, the Dry Mesa Quarry in the Morrison Formation of Western Colorado, where Jim Jensen had earlier discovered Supersaurus. So it's a kind of mistake that you might expect to be able to make. There is a lot of debate about what part of the back the vertebrae came from. Some people say it was near the pelvis, some people say it was near the head, and then everything in between. But it appears that most people agree that it was, in fact, a dorsal vertebrae. Because the Ultrasauros holotype dorsal vertebrae has been now assigned to Supersaurus, Ultrasaurus macintoshi is now considered to be a subjective junior synonym of Supersaurus, 
And that basically just means that if you ever say Ultrasaurus Macintoshi, that just means you're talking about Supersaurus. As I mentioned, those same peers also looked at the shoulder bone that Jim Jensen had described along with the vertebrae. And what they decided was that that shoulder bone could have definitely come from a Brachiosaurus. So Jim Jensen's original statements about that shoulder bone and why it belonged with the dorsal vertebrae was that that shoulder bone was much larger than any Brachiosaurus shoulder bone. But when they looked in more depth, they found that other mounted Brachiosaurus branchi shoulder bones were actually larger, so it didn't make sense to say that this had to have come from another species because it was so much bigger than anything that had ever been seen in Brachiosaurus, because in fact there are examples of Brachiosaurus shoulder bones that are even larger than this. That fossil is now just considered another example of a Brachiosaurus shoulder bone, and as I mentioned, Ultrasaurus macintoshi is just considered another name for Supersaurus. It seems like if he had called the holotype of Ultrasaurus that shoulder bone, then Ultrasaurus would just be a subjective junior synonym for Brachiosaurus, and that vertebrae would just be a misclassified Supersaurus vertebrae. But that's not what he did. <laughs> <laughs> On to the Ultrasaurus, as it is currently known. So Ultrasaurus was discovered, as we said, by Kim back in Korea in the 1980s, and he believed that it had to be an enormous dinosaur because he thought that the bone that he found was a giant ulna, which is the lower arm bone, but it turned out to be a partial humerus, which is a bone that is larger in these dinosaurs. So that threw off all of his calculations on the perceived size of Ultrasaurus. Kim named the species of his Ultrasaurus, Ultrasaurus tabriensis, as we said earlier, but there isn't enough known about that fossil to put it into a specific sauropod family, so it is only classified in the Neosauropoda clad. So Ultrasaurus lived in the Cretaceous period about 110 to 100 million years ago in what is now Korea, but some scientists are calling Ultrasaurus a nomen dubium, which means doubtful name in Latin. And that basically means that because there's only a partial bone found, they're not really convinced that it is its own species. This was further exacerbated when they discovered that the bone put it more in the range of other sauropods rather than being so large that it was unlikely to be one of the previously discovered sauropods. So it's a little bit unclear where Ultrasaurus would sit in the family tree or if it's just an already known sauropod. So to summarize, the Ultrasaurus described by Jensen is what is referred to in paleontology as a chimera, and that means a fossil that's reconstructed by elements from different species. So the shoulder bone of a Brachiosaurus and the spinal vertebrae of a Supersaurus. And the Ultrasaurus that was described by Kim in Korea may not be its own species, depending on who you ask, because there's still quite a bit of uncertainty around that fossil. So that's the long story of Ultrasaurus slash Ultrasauros, and it's a little bit unfortunate that it may not have been its own dinosaur at all, depending on who you ask, but it's always interesting. There were a few sources that I found, old news articles about Ultrasaurus, and it's always sensationalized where people talk about it could be the new largest dinosaur, look how huge it was, and then they always seem to shrink as the research gets published and they look more in depth at what the bones actually meant and how much meat would have actually been on that dinosaur. At least we always learn something from these things, even if it isn't a new largest dinosaur. <laughs>